compressing my mind. It's compressing my consciousness to squeeze it in between screaming and commercials and jingles. I mean, I'm really not born for this. At the end of the day, as good as I am at this, I'm in the National Radio Hall of Fame. I've made a great career in talk radio. Do you think I'm really made for this? I'm really made to be a philosopher. That's who I am. I'm not made to be. I am a philosopher. I'm a poet. I'm a scientist, philosopher. I'm an artist. But I also know what evidence is. So back in the 1950s, actually it was in the 60s that I read his work. I read Velikovsky's work. Look up Emmanuel Velikovsky, Earth and Upheaval and Worlds in Collision. And he, he, you know, the word phrase, he blew my mind. He just upset the equilibrium of my order of the universe. Because he said, how do we explain the skeletons of hippopotamuses in Utah? See, now this goes to the PBS series. They say it's because of global warming and that we've not had this level of carbon dioxide uh, in, the, in the atmosphere since uh, uh, the Pleistocene. And we're going to be flooded. The ice caps are going to melt. Their evidence is clear. And the way they look at the evidence is interesting, but it's wrong. Their conclusions are wrong, is what I'm saying. Velikovsky argued that the reason you find the bones of hippopotamuses in, in the mountains of New Hampshire is not because of global warming and rising and, and falling sea levels, but because of catastrophic events in the celestials. There were catastrophes in the geological record that are explained not by gradual Darwinian means and such, but that the extinction of many species that we see in the geological evidence occurred as a result of catastrophes on a global scale. And so we all have collective memories of this through legends, myths, history of ancient cultures. And Velikovsky appointed to uh, concordances in the accounts of many cultures. I remember seeing this, oh my God. And they're all referring to the same real events. For example, the memory of a flood, Noah's Ark, recorded in the Hebrew Bible. But the same time is described in the Greek legend of Deucalion. It's described in India in the Manu legend. And Velikovsky put forward the idea, the psychoanalytical idea, he was um, an MD psychiatrist from Russia, of cultural amnesia as a mechanism whereby mankind regards these as mere myths and legends, not as something real. Now, maybe that's a little too much for a medium that's compressed between jingles for hair loss and uh, impotence. But God has given me the wonderful medium of talk radio to reach a far greater audience than I could in a university. So let's, let's stick with this for a while. Michael Savage, a host like no other. Hey, here's a question. How did you sleep last night? Did you spend the night tossing and turning, worrying? Now, look, if you're struggling to get a good night's sleep, you've got to try a purple mattress. The founders of Purple are two brothers who have been developing cushioning technology for 30 years on things like medical beds, wheelchairs. Well, in 2016, they finally decided to use their patented comfort technology to create Purple, the world's most scientific mattress. Now, what does that mean? How is Purple different from other mattresses? Listen, the Purple mattress will probably feel different than anything you've ever experienced. Why? Because it uses the brand new material that was developed by an actual rocket scientist. It was not like the memory foam that I'm used to or you're, you're used to. No, no. The purple material feels unique because it's both firm and soft at the very same time. So it keeps everything supported while still feeling really comfortable. Plus, it's breathable. Unlike foams, it's breathable so it sleeps cool. It ends up giving you the zero gravity-like feel so it works for any sleeping position. Okay, 100-night risk-free trial. You're not satisfied? You can return your mattress for a full refund. It's backed by a 10-year warranty, free shipping and returns, free at-home setup, old mattress removal. You ready? You're going to love Purple. And right now, my listeners will get a free Purple pillow with the purchase of a mattress. That's in addition to the great free gifts they're offering site-wide. Just text SAVAGE to 84-888. The only way to get this free pillow is to do this. You ready? Text SAVAGE to 84-888. That's S-A-V-A-G-E to 84888. Text S-A-V-A-G-E to 84888. S-A-V-A-G-E to 84888. Message and data rates may apply.
It is the Savage Nation. You know how many topics I've thrown out already? Uh, you want me to stay simplistic? I could. Or we can continue to do whirling dervishes here and lose the audience. I'm not trying to pull your chain. I'm not trying to put you down. But I'm trying to raise you up. Because if we just get mired in the Dem Republican and Trump is great, Trump is evil, it's the death of talk radio, the death of the human mind, as far as I'm concerned. And I don't want to do it. I mean, there are others who do it much better than I can do it. So I want to talk about climate change. I want to talk about is is it something we should really be worrying about? And I introduced Velikovsky, his ideas that it was uh, based upon all of these fossil record anomalies that were pointed out, for example, in the PBS series uh, on the polar ice caps could be explained by factors other than man is destroying the planet, which is not to argue that I don't think we should reduce pollution. Of course we should. In fact, I've probably done more to save the environment than most of the environmentalists over my lifetime, uh, as you well know. You know, back in 1975, I traveled America over a two-year period, and I wrote a book called Plant a Tree. Uh, it's interesting that Trump came up with the idea of planting millions of trees to capture some of the excess carbon in the atmosphere. But there's a problem with that. It's a great idea. I mean, I wrote a book called Plant a Tree. I'm going to send it to the president very shortly because it's a state-by-state, city-by-city plan of which trees to use, how to plant them, based upon the experts that I interviewed at the time. So believe me, I've been into this whole field of environmentalism or conservatism or cons- conservationism, whichever way you want to put it, for a very long period of time. And I don't need a left to, to uh, lecture me on the subject. But, I mean, facts are facts. So let's go back to the facts of the simple questions. Is America ready for its first gay president? Let's make it simple. It's more interesting in a way. It's Rock and Roll Friday. Uh, <clears throat> do uh, What do red and blue America see eye to eye on? Uh, these are good questions, and I'd like the answers from you, the audience, on all these topics. And uh, I'll take them in the order in which you're holding. Michael in San Francisco, line one. What do red and blue agree on, Michael? How are you? Please, just answer the question. Let's not get personal. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, there's a very uh, a few very significant points on which Red and Blue America agree. The first significant one that I would bring up is we agree that rich people and large corporations should pay higher taxes. Rather okay, let, let's pause for a minute. Let's discuss it. I am, by definition, a rich person. I should pay more taxes than I do? Yes. Why? You, I, I took the money from you? Uh, no, I'm, I'm wealthy too, Mike. Not Michael. Not as wealthy as you, but I would also pay higher taxes. You asked. Wait, 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 Michael. Let's discuss this rationally. I was born poor to an immigrant family. Every penny I've earned, I have earned on my own. I have paid my fair share of taxes. I've had my birthright stolen from me by affirmative action. I have paid through the nose on my taxes. Why should I pay more? Well, because the masses of of Americans believe that we've gone too far in cutting taxes on wealthy people and corporate. Well, the masses of Americans may be wrong. The masses of Americans are just jealous losers. Well, you didn't ask me. You asked me, you asked me what red and blue America agree on, and I'm telling you. Well, I'm not so sure that taxes. I'm not sure the masses agree on that, but they also agree on other things uh, that you may find to be troublesome. Uh, If you were to say the masses could be swayed to believe that white men should not have the right to vote, it could be that with the the vote, the way it's been uh, set up by the illegal aliens and such, they could vote on a mandate that white men should not vote. Would that be would that be would that be right or constitutional? Uh, It certainly would not be. But the notion that there are millions of illegal aliens voting in our elections is a fantasy. No, it isn't. You have a fantasy that they're not voting. Why then would the Democrats be fighting so hard to make sure there's no voter ID. What what sense does that make other than to make sure that illegal aliens vote? Well, I don't think that Democrats are fighting uh, in general. They're- yes, they are. Every time a state had a ballot initiative demanding voter ID, it was the Democrats who fought against it uh, under Nancy Pelosi, by the way. Why would they want illegal aliens to vote? You say there are none. none. You say there are, it's, it's insignificant. I would argue it's very significant. How, how do you know who the person is when you go to a voting booth? All the years I voted here in the Bay Area, I have noticed line upon line of people. 
and they will not accept ID. When I try to present, they say, oh, no, no, we don't want to see it. All the nice old ladies there, all of the do-gooders. But I think we're getting distracted. Let's talk about taxes for a minute. Uh, what should my tax rate be in California? Right now, it's 15%. Is that is that too low? I am, I am not qualified to debate what the exact rates ought to Do be. Do you realize how many people like myself are fleeing California because of the criminals who are running the state, who are ripping them off? How is it the state of Florida could have zero taxation or New Hampshire zero taxation and still function as states? While this criminal state charges 13 to 15 percent, that's on top of federal tax. How is that possible? Where's the money going? Uh, the roads are broken. The bums are all over the streets. Uh, where is the money going? They're stealing it. Don't you understand that? No, I don't think that they're stealing it. I think there are certainly inefficiencies, but I also think... You don't think they're stealing it? Have you seen the Mohammed Nuru uh, case? Are you aware of the Mohammed Nuru scandal in San Francisco? Uh, I'm aware that there is a scandal. I don't remember the details of it. Well, of course, because the Nun newspaper won't let you see that it leads all the way up the Democrat feeding uh, chain. Mohammed Nuru is a scandal that is equal to one of the greatest scandals in American political history. And it shows you where the stolen money is actually going. Uh, bid rigging, uh, paying off politicians to make certain that certain things get built or don't get built. Uh, the money is stolen. 20% of all the money that's stolen goes to the politicians. Everybody knows that. So I think we pay not only our fair share, those of us who earn a good living, but we pay far too much in this state. And I'm talking about the state of California where you live. You, do, you, do you pay state taxes at all? Of course I do. Like I said, I come from a very high net worth uh, household here in San Francisco. So I'm did, aware. Did you earn it or did you inherit the, the net worth? I in I uh, earned every penny of it. No, no. I heard you say I in. I heard you say I in. Oh no! I said I. My wife and I both work in tech. We both make very good living. All right, good. All right. So I'm going to take you on your word, and you want to pay more money. Uh, I would be fine seeing my. So why don't you just pay more money? Why don't you just contribute a good portion of what you're not paying enough of? to the poor or to some homeless shelter or whatever, why do you want to tell me that I should pay more money when I don't want to? First of all, it's unconstitutional to demand that a certain segment of the population pay a higher rate of taxes, incidentally. Well, if you want to unwind the Constitution to the degree where the income tax itself is illegal... It actually is illegal. It actually... Well, a graduated income tax is totally illegal. I believe, I believe there should be a flat tax, incidentally. What would be wrong with a flat tax of 15% for everyone? Do you know that a good percentage of population pays no taxes? Yes, I know, and so, so do some of our largest corporations. It's All right, well, on the largest corporations, I think you have no argument from me. How is it that a company like Amazon could pay only 1.5% of its income in taxes? How is that possible? Well, that, that our tax law is filled with loopholes and very wealthy laws. Well, so on that, we would agree 100%. Companies like Amazon, Google, uh, you name them, who are getting away with tax murder should be stopped immediately and pay retroactively. A thousand percent right. On that, you don't have to be a communist to agree. A thousand percent right. How does Amazon only pay 1.5% of its income in taxes? How is that possible? That You know how it's possible? Really crazy. They hire former IRS lawyers as lobbyists who spend their every day in Washington, D.C., paying off politicians to make sure they don't pay their fair share. Yep. So, I mean, I, you have no argument for me. And if Amazon paid its fair share, if Google paid its fair share, if Apple paid its fair share, uh, if Microsoft paid its fair share, if Twitter paid its fair share, if the tech giants paid their fair share, there would, no need, there would be no need to rob more money from individuals like myself and make me leave the state. Well, Michael, you may well be right about those numbers. That is possible at the highest level. The question is, and it's a question that every functioning democracy is constantly facing in the battle between left and right, is at what level should the most successful people in the country, which includes you, and to a lesser degree it includes me, and to a huge degree it includes these multi-billion dollar corporations, to what level should we collect taxes from them in order to fund social programs to protect the people who didn't do remotely as well? We're now wait, 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 where, where is it? Where is it written? Where is it written that I wait? Where is it written that I have to protect the individual? 